When it comes to countering the troubling effects of climate change, we have a powerful ally, the ocean, which absorbs 90% of our planet's excess heat and removes around a quarter of our CO2 emissions from the atmosphere. Unfortunately, we live with the highest levels of heat-trapping atmospheric carbon dioxide in human history, which is taking an enormous toll on the oceans. Raised CO2 levels not only heat up the oceans and let sea levels rise, but also cause an increase in ocean acidity, giving our ally a bad case of heartburn. This is extremely serious for the millions of species that have evolved to survive in a delicately balanced ecosystem. Acidity challenges corals, shellfish and some microscopic algae, impacting large parts of the ocean's food webs. Right now, to help save the ocean's plants and animals, as well as the people who rely on them for their livelihood and food, we need to go to zero on new CO2 emissions, and we need to find ways to remove a trillion tons of atmospheric CO2. So, how might this happen? The Earth has two natural ways of consuming CO2. One involves the biological carbon cycle of photosynthesis that locks a portion of the consumed carbon into soils and ocean sediments. The second is part of a larger but much slower geologic carbon cycle, where surface rocks weather with rain and atmospheric CO2 to produce alkaline carbon molecules that wash into the ocean. Think of it as the land giving the ocean a giant antacid that over long timescales also locks away billions of tons of atmospheric CO2. These natural processes eventually help the planet to recover and rebalance, but not in a human-relevant timescale. However, there are ways to drastically speed up these processes. One particularly intriguing approach is ocean alkalinity enhancement which accelerates the geologic cycle, consuming both CO2 and ocean acidity. There are different proposals to do this, such as adding finely ground alkaline rock to soils in the ocean or in controlled reactors. Take, for example, a scheme for accelerating the weathering of limestone. Here, seawater and CO2-rich flue gas are pumped through a reactor containing crushed limestone. In the reactor, CO2 is consumed, and the resulting alkalized seawater is returned to the ocean. On a small scale, comparable systems are commonly used to treat home saltwater aquaria. Similarly, alkaline solution is added to the seawater in which oyster larvae are commercially grown, thereby neutralizing acidity and increasing the young oyster's survival rates. The proceeding suggests that similar actions could be taken at larger scales but important uncertainties would first need to be carefully studied. Can ocean alkalinity enhancement really benefit marine ecosystems by protecting them from ocean acidification? How will organisms and ecosystems respond to trace elements contained in alkaline rocks? As for cost, initial assessments suggest that this approach can remove a ton of CO2 for as little as $10, well within an acceptable cost range, but at large scales. What are the true costs? And what are the wider economic, environmental and societal consequences of such actions relative to benefits? It's time for a scientific assessment of all potential methods of CO2 and ocean acidity reduction, including ocean alkalinity enhancement, to better inform policy and decision makers. Right now, a growing community of scientists, NGOs, government institutions and entrepreneurs is forming around this important topic. To find out more, please visit our website.